and we are going to be playing The Art of Rally today. And I am going to do very poorly at it. But that's good because I need to practice some rear-wheel drive drifting, so this is probably a good thing. Bum, 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 bum. Why is that not coming back? It is very, very slowly. Okay. Du, 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 du. Chat's up. Game's loading. We are playing with the NB4 RC remote controller today, which should be pretty awesome. Um, I just want to go into the options and tweak things a bit. Now, I did fire this up earlier. We'll be doing the joystick. Um, hard controls, graphic, gameplay. There was something about those controls. The advanced settings, that's good. I'm going to max that out. Now, my reasoning for this is I've got a lot of this stuff on the uh, RC unit itself, so I'd rather have the full range of sensitivity and then dial it back dynamically on the, the transmitter while we're racing, so... I guess it's somewhat cheating, but to be honest, I don't really care. So I'm going to start off with a free room. Uh, as you can see, I've already got one of the cassettes, but uh, it's just very, very quickly learning the ropes. And we are going to be making use of um, the, uh, the wings here. So I've got um, over here clutch and over the, this side we've got the handbrake. Uh, location. Oh, I've got a couple of locations. Okay, I still have to unlock them, but can we change? We're just going to go with morning, I think. Oh, so many choices. Oh, I thought I didn't have these unlocked. Oh, here we go. Need a complete career mode. Oh, a rally truck. Okay, a Dakar truck. I'm sold already. Now, for those who don't know, I'm actually building an RC car, one of these in 124th scale, which as far as I can tell, from YouTube at least, no one else has ever done. Log transporter, that could be fun. And you know what? I could go with a tri-wheeler. I've been looking at doing a JDM style uh, K, K truck. Um, as a model, so we will play with that later. And I do like the van. The van is actually pretty awesome. So I think we're just... Uh, let's go with something a bit more powerful. Let's try Group B. Oh wow, so we've actually got subcategories here. Like dust speed van. Oh, very, very nice. Okay, so they've significantly expanded the amount of uh, vehicles you can use. So I could go for the Mini. That's a front wheel drive as well. I found this car a bit underwhelming in terms of handling, so maybe let's let's go with the Mini. You know what? Let's just stick with the Mini. Let's try something new. For exactly zero viewers. <laughs> I don't care. This is fun. So this game was released just yesterday, but I've had my eye on it for about a year. A year. Um, I really, really dig the art style. The music is absolutely incredible, and I didn't realise, but I didn't pick up the soundtrack, so I will be doing that very, very shortly, or after the stream. Let's begin the stage. So we start from the staging area, and this is pretty representative of... Oh, there we go. Took a while for the transmitter to uh, kick in. So we are on automatic. And we're going to try a handbrake turn because I want to see how effective they are. Uh, doesn't quite have the power to back up, but that's fine. This thing turns in a lot better than the previous car. So let's go through the car wash and smash into a wall. Now I believe this would actually work with a G29 as well. Uh, change my styling because uh, that just shows up as a joystick, but. Um, as I'm a big RC guy, I really wanted to try this with the remote. And in fact, one of the more interesting things I've found, one of the things that was, was recently added, uh, is the crowd. So, I haven't been able to hit anyone in the crowd, which is kind of good. Um, they do seem to get out of the way pretty quickly. Um, don't know what this photographic icon means, but... Uh, actually, let's give that a go. And the circle around the vehicle when uh, your view is obscured is also new, so compared to the demo. 
So let's take in the view. Oh, there was a bonus. That is very, very nice. So we might try and max out everything here, and then I think we'll go on to career mode. Now I'm using K per, KPH, because I am from our world where metric, or sorry, a location where metric is the uh, predominant form of measurement. Oops, let's get in there. I was just looking at my title, and I think I might have to go fix that. Um, Yeah, just one moment. I'm going to alt-tab out for a sec and just find out what's going on here. Uh, Twitter, 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 Twitch. And now I've lost all my windows. Great. Trying out the Art of Rally game. Okay, that seems to be good. Okay, now it updates. I, I really, really sometimes hate the Twitch UI. Well, I hate web, web UIs in general. They just seem to be an absolute mess compared to what we had in the past. Um, actually, did I see correctly back then that there was a letter? No, that looks like it was me imagining things, but I'm just going to go back and double check. Ah, oh, okay, it was just a landscape. So just tapping the brake doesn't seem as nearly as effective as a handbrake, so I'll be giving the handbrake a bit more of a go. Um, having it finger operated with just my uh, one my index finger is not the easiest, but uh, luckily using the trigger operated brake on this, um, it does seem to be working pretty well. More scenic views. Now the question is, do we duck? I was going to say, do we duck from the side road, but that's actually a fence. Can we go through the fence? No. Okay. Some nice cows. Or the tilt cam. So I've got the throttle maxed out at the moment. And, whoa. Just lost internet there, I think. I think I need to pay more attention, so... Funnily enough, I think this might actually be easy with a higher powered car, but, uh... Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm not very good at this, but that's fine. I must say, I, I am really digging the aesthetics of this, and it looks like they've only improved, um, since the demo. Alright, I want to get some sliding going now. Under throttle, this is definitely not powerful enough uh, to get sideways. Or well, maybe it is in third gear, but we'll see here. So we're in fourth. Okay, so I can get a bit of counter steer going there, which is good. Which reminds me why I don't drive. <laughs> Return, taking the view. I kind of wish I could free look um, in those views. I've been very, very tempted to bind another two buttons so I can actually shift. Um, actually, maybe I want to go off and adjust my buttons. We may do that in a sec. Uh, we'll just try and do a complete lap and explore the area first. Oh wow, that gets really tidy very, very quickly. Which I mean, I guess is somewhat to be expected. Oh, I'm going to have to jump for that one. Uh, given the short wheelbase. So we're what, in fourth. Take the long way around, I think. Now if this was racing, I'm pretty sure if I go this far off track, it just resets my car. Uh, so I'm really going to have to pick up my game and learn to brake a bit better. I already am modulating the uh, throttle as well, a bit, but I'm not definitely not braking as I should be. Alright, so I think in third gear I'd just be able to drift that.
Okay. I was just throwing out the clutch there, so the clutch you can engage the clutch if you're in uh, an automatic like this is set up to be. It'd be interesting to see that if I set this to, um, if I bind the shift up and down buttons, if I can actually shift in the automatic for like a, um, a semi-auto, is it semi-automatic or sequential? I can't remember. Funnily enough, I'm not actually a car guy. I like to uh, drive them, but the ins and outs are not really that interesting to me. I really don't care how an internal combustion engine works, for example. So I think part... I definitely... I definitely can't drive well if I go full throttle. If I stick to half throttle, it seems a lot more controllable. So maybe what I'll do is go half to three quarters and then just work my way up. This is just beautiful to drive around. Oh, this is not going to end well. Okay, let's bind some buttons. R accept sign. We're going to make you software one left and right. Let's go for the right. We're going to make you channel three. Actually, you know what? I'm also going to change the amount of channels I've got. Output mode. Add bus. Update receiver, system, units, language, channel number definition, eight channels, awesome, uh, so we are making you channel four which is going to be handbrake, uh, left flap is going to be shift down which will be channel five, and you are going to be channel 6. Did I get that right? No, I didn't. So you go channel 6. I'd love to do this on stream, but it's actually pretty hard to capture. Uh, you have to deal with a whole lot of brightness issues, and just generally not worth it. Uh, options, graphics, gameplay, controls. Let's switch there. Going to make your handbrake, you shift up, you shift down. Now I don't have a clutch button, but that can be fixed. Uh, we will make that button shift up by making it channel three. FB, yep. Steering trim, I'm going to change you to channel 3. Yes, and then if we go to clutch. Oh, interesting, I can't do that. Well, let's see what happens now. So let's get back on the road, and then we'll start playing around with the clutch. Bum, bum, bum. Okay, so I think the automatic is fully automatic. You don't get to uh, hint. Yeah, I can't shift. Okay, that's fine. We'll just focus on the driving experience because I'm not a very good driver, fully enough. And we'll just cut across here. Like any good rally racer will do. I'm very, very tempted to go put the points in to get that Dakar truck, uh, especially considering how much work I've been doing on Dakar trucks as of late. I like the idea of big wobbly things with a lot of power that can tip over if you have too much power. Um, I've been playing around with the, uh, the UDR uh, from Traxxas and that's very very similar. You really have to, uh, you really have to be careful about um, when you apply the power and how much turn you've got. So you normally actually have to back off quite a bit before you turn because that chassis is very prone to rolling and I've got the, uh, the marks on the, uh, the chassis to prove it. And the solid rear axle means the back end loves to swing out. But uh, that's why I bought it, because it was a challenge and it just handles. Actually, funny enough, very much like the real thing, apparently. But, uh, handling poorly is uh, probably the best way of putting why I bought it. 
Oh, so I actually changed where the handbrake was. Now that should be my middle finger. So let's give that a go. Yep, okay, that seems pretty good. It's a bit hard to engage, but that's fine. Let's give it a go here. Okay, so we're carrying too much speed there. God, just driving around is fun in this game. Well, actually, oh no, it's down here, I think. Actually, no, I think... Did we go over a bridge? I don't think we did. Ah, oh, there's a bridge back there. So let's go back to the centre area and do some bit of practicing and then we'll jump into career mode. This is just so satisfying. It very much reminds me of the art of drifting, which I never kind of got good at, and that's because I had issues with um, joysticks, specifically the NB4 and the G29 steering wheel. Um, but I may go back to that. Oh, nice long drift there. So let's try a bit of counter steer. Actually, let's get some speed up first. Okay, so it doesn't really like it. Turn in a bit more. Yeah. So let's... Oh. Okay, slowly getting to it. So let's back out in that case and see how badly I can do in competition mode. Or career mode. Um, let's... Ah, oh, so they do have a camera mode. That's great. No mouse support, it's all uh, finger driven. Why is that? Oh, because this is a weird keyboard, that's why. Okay, so it looks like you have to go to a certain spot, or do you have to. Can you. No, okay, so the camera's locked in place in front of the car, it appears. Uh, that's fine, I don't intend to do much with that, so let's quit to the menu and start the game. Why am I disconnected? Do you want to quit? Please not be the entire game. No DMS records. Oh, you know why? Because the cable came loose. Let's replug that. Okay, uh, career. Stages, best total load of all time. Actually follows rally history. Ooh, randomly selected, uh, generated. Okay, so I can get more liveries. Oh, nice. So let's start racking up some points and unlocking things. I think I have to get to 1991 for the track, so I've got a lot of years to go. Likely not going to get it on um, this run. Terminal damage. I'm going to go with the default damage level. And default AI. Now I'm not expecting to do well. But that should be... Okay, so I can get more cars in there. Uh, but I want to see where I rank compared to the AI, so... I think I do want a tiny bit more horsepower. <coughs> do, 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 do. Oh, man, I'm enjoying this. Portanango. I'm not even going to try and pronounce these names. My pronunciation is as bad as my spelling, which is to say atrocious. So I'm actually going for a larger camera today as well, which you can see. Yeah. Well, I'm getting a lot of reflection off the screen itself, so... I don't know if that sets the moon, uh, the mood, or if I should uh, go off and um, get my lighting set up uh, just to fix that. But uh, that, um, there we go. That uh, giant uh, vent above me 
tends to blow the camera out if I'm not careful. So. Okay, so let's begin the stage. 10Ks. So that was good. The tracks seem a bit wider compared to free roam. Okay, so it does reset if we go too far off. Which I must admit is somewhat annoying because I'm going to have to keep this tight and I'm not particularly good at that. So I'm trying to borrow my uh, Mini Z drifting skills here and they're working somewhat, but. Uh, a bit more. No, nope, that was not good. I actually can't remember the last time I played a game like this. So, the previous game I've been playing on Twitch has been uh, Battletech, and that definitely does not require anything in the way of reflexes. I haven't even been doing any of the RC car stuff as of late either, so I can't even leverage a lot of that. Stay on. There we go. Wow. Um, with the mini RC cars, they handle a lot sharper than this does, so... I'm very used to having to have very, very fast reactions rather than planning miles ahead. a little bit there. Now I did find that this game in rain mode at night with the headlights on, it looks absolutely incredible. Um, and the night missions are great if you're struggling with the uh, dips on the road. Um, it's not as much of an issue with this level, but uh, some of the hillier roads, um, you'd actually get airborne without realizing it and then come right up to a turn and just completely blow through it. This game does look gorgeous. I, I wish, kind of wish I could put some anti-aliasing on it, um, and I might configure that later, but uh, just a tiny bit of shimmer and some issues with pixelization because of that. But uh, apart from that, this is running at, uh, yeah, I need to pay attention, uh, 1440 by 900 because I'm running an ultra wide, and hence why I've got the border at the bottom, um, and just some nice, quickly photoshopped up artwork at the bottom which basically means desaturation and screw around with contrast and um, and whatnot and luckily with about five minutes worth of work it's a great way to make an overlay oh, stuff that up I don't know if there's a bit of a dead zone here maybe that's what I'm experiencing might actually screw around with the uh, the turning ratios shortly, just so I get more turn right off the bat. Let's admit the camera does get me a bit dizzy, so I did see it did have fairly configurable uh, camera options, so I do want to go play around with that later. Maybe I just want to reduce the velocity a bit. Okay, so we've got a left hand turn up here. Should have probably handbraked that one, but uh, that's fine. Oh, that was better. Okay, starting to get the hang of it now. So I was definitely trying to counter steam, and I probably shouldn't have been. Hopefully this is the end. Maybe not. Nope. So I'm getting, I don't know if it's stuttering or if the frame rate's dripping, uh, just dropping. So I might also drop the graphical settings again as well. Oh, actually there's a bar on the left hand side that tells me how far I'm through the course, which is nice. I didn't even notice that. It doesn't really stand out. Too fast. So 
Some nice flowing corners at the moment. And unfortunately I've backed off the accelerator because I'm getting a bit paranoid. But uh, time to go all out, I think. I'm actually surprised at how much skill there are you need in this game, so as I said, I'm, I'm by no means a good driver, um, but this is still pretty brutal. Like if this was Need for Speed, for example, I'd be doing significantly better than that, but that game really does a lot to try and help you out. Like I've actually got the assists on in this game and I'm still doing all white-ish. Was a look. Okay, and nearly there. So the next gate should be our finish. There we go. So I definitely need to learn to back off the accelerator a bit as well, especially on some of those sharper turns, rather than trying to do a handbrake turn. Okay, 872. Let's continue. Result. So I don't know how many drivers I'm competing against either. That'll be an interesting question. Stage two. Or how many stages? I'm guessing two slash two, or two, pipe two is, uh, it just means two stages, so. And while we're doing that, let's just quickly jump around. And let's begin. And I just realized someone commented about me taking out spectators. Oh boy. So look at that lot, those lighting effects are absolutely incredible. Yeah, these vehicles really do feel weighty. And oh no, it didn't respawn now. Now I did try on harder modes in the demo and you really, really badly damage the car. Like, I think you can take out just like the engine and then wheels and different parts of the car. And um, boy, does it change the handling of the car greatly when you do it. Having a lot of fun though. I was hoping this would be a game I could fire up quickly and just get a couple of laps in at lunch, but I don't really think it's that type of game. It's one of those ones where you probably want a good 20 minutes to be able to play it. And you probably do something like a career mode in each stint. Okay. So I think I've just confirmed you can't kill spectators, which is definitely helping my conscience a bit. And wow, do you, you really do have to make sure you're controlling the throttle well. You can't just expect to be able to pull the throttle and do well in this game. And I still haven't mastered the braking, but uh, especially if, having played other simulators like Dirt for this era of cars, um, when you hit the brake, you've got no idea where the car, car is going to end up. And I'm specifically thinking of the Lancia Stratos here, which actually comes later. Uh, when we do the Group B, um, and this definitely predates it by I think 10 to 15 years. Um, but in Dirt 2, playing with Valencia Stratos, that, I, that took a lot more skill than I um, realised. Oh, that was almost a great turn. Unfortunately I did miss the intro for this game, so there's a full intro with some of the characters from uh, The Art of Drifting. Um, I'd be interested to see if that turn gives this game a story or not, or if they're just like a tutorial type thing. 
So yeah, the, the Golden Buddha definitely does make a uh, reappearance, at least in the intro of this game. I haven't seen him anywhere else yet. Yeah, I need to really tweak the uh, steering on this, I think. I just need it to be a bit more sensitive. Let's go full out. Oh, double drift. That was nice. I've been happy if I'd have gotten that one as well. Okay, it's all starting to mesh now. Um, this game is definitely a lot easier to drift in the rain, so like the weather actually does play a pretty massive role. And as I've said previously, like playing this game in the night with the headlights actually does make it easier to see some of the uh, the dips in the course. I do love how the people move out of the way. That is actually kind of neat. And I do love that the people are just sticks. Uh, I got a close-up look uh, before, and they've got like a head and a body, and that's about it. And it's all the same shape, so I don't even know if you could make the distinction between head and body at that point. Oh, nice. So at least I'm staying on the course a bit better now. <laughs> And I think that's just due to very, very small movements have a very, very unpredictable effect on the car. And I'm, there might even be some dead band on my transmitter that might be causing that. Um, I've disabled dead banding on in the game. Um, but I think I've got 3% by default on the transmitter, which means uh, I'm probably turning a small amount and it's actually not affecting the steering. Well, yeah, just playing around with there. It's not too bad, though. Swip and turn here. So rather than actually practicing braking, what I'm trying to do is just come off the braking, and then later on work about work out how to do uh, sharper deceleration. But just coming off the braking, especially it like that. Well, I probably needed some braking there, but. Um, it also didn't help that that uh, went from wide to sharp in that turn, so... There we go. Nearly. <laughs> oh god, that was fun. Yeah, so I'm just jumping around with my... So I've got my chat up in front of me. Wow, from this level it makes it look like I'm going actually a lot faster than... Oh no, there's the slowness. Leaderboard. Valley results three. Let's continue. Is there another level or is that it? So I can. Oh, I did come in third. Wow, 21 minutes. Okay, so depending on how the next couple of rounds go, I might even have to bump up the difficulty a bit. Just to, uh, I, I guess, it, yeah, no, I will, because I will get better and get into second and first fairly reliably, and then I want to shrink the field down a bit, so, awesome. So that should have unlocked a livery, I think. I don't know if I have to get a stage win. No, I don't. I, that's pretty good. Uh, ooh, first one the 200 km an hour club. Nice. What's the time? 6 o'clock. The dust could be fun. I've, I've got... I really do like the BMWs, so... Podium. <laughs> Oh, you can actually see the uh, the, blow, the glowing um, brake lights there in 1969. Um, I haven't won. Do I want to give that another... No, let, let's try this, I think. Uh, we'll leave it on defaults again. 
So rear wheel drive with more power, both four speeds. I do like the blue. Let's go all blue, I think. Oh, Japan Rally. Let's begin the stage. I'm not going to worry about handbrakes at this point, but I might have to rebind that because I'm not particularly happy with where I've got the button for that. I might make my index finger, so my middle finger, the um, shift up, shift down. Okay, concentrate first. Chat later. So this seems to have less grip. Oh yeah, that slides a lot. I actually wonder how um, realistic the uh, physics engine is and um, how the uh, car performance was actually modelled. Yeah, this thing does not want to turn. So that means we're going to have to decelerate harder, but it definitely seems like the straight line speed is there, even though it's got less horsepower than our previous vehicle. Oh, that carries some momentum a bit when it turns. Which seems to indicate to me that it's got a fairly good physics model. Okay, so this does like a bit of brake. Oh, there's one of those hidden jumps. So I do like the fire spitting out the back. That's actually an effect I'm trying to replicate in my own game at the moment. Um, basically by modeling, I guess, pressure. And then if it exceeds a certain pressure when you um, uh, hit the brakes, it will then end up backfiring and releasing that pressure. Uh, but we'll have to see how that model works. I haven't done much testing. That's just how I think it should work in my head. Uh, but I might go off and see how other people have done as well. Uh, but the light kits I've seen so far, um, for the IC cars don't seem to be terribly sophisticated in that manner. Uh, as far as I've seen it's when you hit the brake it just always backfires which I don't really like. I only want it to backfire really only want it to backfire if there's been if it should backfire so you've had a lot of power and then you decide to release that with braking. So for anyone watching on YouTube, uh, I would definitely be including a link to this um, on Steam. It's also available on the Epic Game Store and GOG, and I kind of wish I actually bought it on GOG. Um, just because I, I tend to like supporting GOG, and I like having a copy that I can download that just doesn't mysteriously disappear one day. It's, Valve has been pretty good at their stewardship, but... Uh, better safe than sorry and it means I can play offline so that's actually important like on days like today where I actually did have lose internet for a good five ten minutes while I was actually downloading this game oddly enough in the background oops so the steering on this is a bit unpredictable um, Sometimes it likes to dive in, and I think it likes to dive in under braking. So let's try that. Yeah, it does. Okay. So the way to be transferring forward and grip increasing on the front wheels. But if you put the accelerator on them, the rear end slips. So it looks like this might have a lot of uh, forward back uh, weight transfer, uh, which would be causing that issue. So if that's the case and my theory is accurate, the physics model on this game is actually much better than I could have hoped for. But it definitely does feel weird. And the cars seem like micro machine sized, so smaller than what I'm used to, but they also seem a lot smaller than what I'm used to. And I guess that really comes down to scale speed, so I'm very I'm used to probably about 500 km an hour scale speed to almost 1000 km an hour scale speed. Uh, whereas this is probably more like uh, 1 to 1. I guess that's why Mini Z tracks have to be so enormously large, considering how big they are. 
Even the drift tracks have always blown me away at how large they have to be, but the, uh, the race ones, like the MRO3s, um, have to be absolutely, well they normally are pretty massive. Of course most of those cars are pretty high speed, like my um, uh, GLR for example, I know does 60 k's an hour, um, at least on the dyno. And with some proper gearing, uh, I could probably actually hit that on the track as well. So if you've got something weighing 200 grams going 60 kilometers an hour, you probably do need a lot of space to both accelerate and brake. Although that's an interesting idea, how could we measure the acceleration on a Mini Z and then compare them? Because that would give us an indication of ESC quality and motor quality as well as your gearing setup, which I don't think is something that's traditionally covered. Most people are looking at steady, steady state max speed, which in all honesty, you're not always at that speed. I, I care more about acceleration and torque, and maybe that's worth testing. Um, I do have a diff tester, and I think I might be able to modify that to measure torque, or it actually probably indir indirectly measures torque anyway. Well, almost six minutes exactly. So I might have to see what I can do with that. Now, uh, once again, back to the um, oh, that's interesting. The people who are following me on uh, YouTube, um, I normally don't upload my videos to or my streaming game streaming videos to my YouTube channel. Um, I will be making an exception for this, basically because it's relevant to people with Mini Z hobbies. Um, I might for other racing games, but it would have to be relevant. So you can probably expect to see some more footage like this. If you really don't like that, let me know below. Um, if you do like it, also let me know below. Um, or not, I'm not your boss. Um, but if you hate things, probably a good idea to tell me so I don't keep on making more of it. Oh yeah, once you, get, once you work out the throttle modulation, it's a lot better. Actually, speaking of throttle modulation, uh, I was reading somewhere that model or RC cars are generally designed for 80% to be the throttle that you normally use for most of the car. Uh, and then that last 20% is available but is somewhat, I want to say, unstable. And that's generally been fairly accurate. It's normally somewhere between 80 and 90%. So when you engage full throttle, uh, you can expect the car to not handle nearly as well. So you want to be going like dead straight. Um, but, uh, so your, your typical speed where you can control the car is about 80%. And this definitely feels like it's following that. So if I go all out, I basically lose a lot of my steering. But if I stick at 80%, I'm able to take the most stuff into a wall, apparently. Uh, I'm able to take most corners and control the car fairly well, so. Just a tip for those people who are new to Mini Zeds, basically, you might find that handy. Although, if you do are new to Mini Zeds, um, do try and find out how you tune the transmitter uh, and get your endpoint set for both your acceleration and your turning, um, because that you will find that greatly makes the car handle very, very predictably. Like I see, a lot of people are uh, getting the cars straight out of the box and taking them onto the track and then just crashing into walls. And that's because by default, um, the transmitter is actually poorly tuned. And so you've got a massive amount of dead space at maximum uh, turn. So basically steering maxes out at only a couple of degrees of turning the wheel. And so it's basically like having on-off turning, not um, hobby grade proportional steering. But uh, if you dial the endpoints back a bit, um, so that uh, full lock is on the steering wheel is full lock on the wheels just as you as you get to full lock uh, you tend to find you have a much much better driving experience and it's a lot easier concentrate concentrate bit of acceleration there I was hoping that to get the back end out but actually uh, tighten the back end up which was a bit counterintuitive um, there's definitely a difference in grip between the dirt track I'm on and the grass and so as soon as I go onto the grass um, all bets are off. I have to completely change my driving style. So, Oops. 
So I accelerated and then braked, which is probably not the right order. I should really be turning and then braking to bring it back out and then accelerating to help maintain that slide. I'm going to have to shoot down straight. Oh, this might be the end actually. And it was. That did feel a lot shorter. So this is why I'm thinking this is a 20 minute game. So the first one was two six minute ones and this one was a what a six minute and what is effectively a four minute. So it looks like a season is probably about 10 minutes or so. So 20 minute, 20, 25 minutes should give you about two seasons. Um, and quite a bit of variation as well. So it came third again. Can I get two minutes? I can probably get to second place with better driving. Um, I need a completely different driving style to take first. And that'll be just getting on the accelerator faster and braking heavier. Um, but that means I'm going to have to be a lot more precise in some of my turning. In fact, while we're doing this, let's screw around with the steering response. Put a bit more exponential in. And throttle. Where do I want the most control? <coughs> Exponential. Yeah, I probably in my mid range want more control, so I'm going to change the exponential to be positive. I want the BMW, so I've got that with the extra livery. Ooh, nice livery there. Let's go with that. Do, 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 do. So it's six o'clock now. I've been streaming for about 15 minutes. I'm probably going to put about another half hour into this and then call it a day. Um, so probably about another two seasons. Maybe even a bit of free room. Oh, this feels a lot talkier. This is sort of how I like my cars. But also a lot more unpredictable. I love that this is what, 1969 and there's wind farms. Oh, this is... That's better. So this is difficult to talk to be able to do that nice slower speed drifting. I should also see if I can flip the car because there is a hidden message underneath the car. As I found out during, uh, well, my first run off screen, just to make sure the settings were correct. Um, and also in the demo version. Okay, so this steering exponential is not the best for this car. It's too sensitive. That's alright, I can actually dial that out quite easily. So that would have been a great drifting point though. I really would love to uh, know how the, um, the map generation is done on this because... Oh wow! Okay, uh, because it, it is really nice. This car does not like to stop. I'm going to actually see if 
I can uh, adjust the uh, steering control next time I crash. Really carries the corners. I'm sort of iron manning this as well and then I'm, I'm not trying to not recover. Okay, so I'm on the steering screen. I just have to adjust the value, which is going to be the hard part. I was gonna, no, it didn't restart it, which is good. So picturesque. Oh, yeah, I definitely hit them. So maybe a twelve. So I'm at thirty minus thirty-two percent of my steering. I might need to go down to about twelve to fifteen. Oh, so this is three rounds. Interesting. And it looks like a good repair on the third round. That'll be when where it's good to turn up to the harder mode, so you've actually got the attrition of uh, damage over multiple rounds. Definitely not quite ready for that yet. Okay, so yeah. I'm at 15% and the steering is really, really nice and buttery now. So normally that would have caused me damage on the harder modes. And in fact, that would have almost wrecked the car. I effectively just t burn the car there, so... Oh, This is very fishtail this vehicle. And does not like to stabilise. So we're going over a press and you actually want to brake so you don't fly into the air. Because uh, you can't accelerate while you're flying. Well, you can because you're changing direction, but uh, you can't change your velocity. Or well, it goes down, it doesn't increase, and you really want it to be increasing. soft into rock. Yeah, I can really see, so I had a comment earlier that someone said pace notes would be really, really good. And that really, really would be nice actually. Um, I can only concentrate so far ahead. Although I do really do like the, the widescreen on this. The, uh, being able to see a lot of the countryside is nice if I can't see that far or concentrate that far ahead. And I guess it's because it's in focus as well, which um, I had more vertical space would be a bit of an issue. Because of the tilt cam, uh, it just gets blurrier and blurrier the further you look out. Oh, okay. Ah, so this car does like its weight transfer as well. But that weight transfer seems to come on a lot later. Sure, rocks don't look like that in real life, but I'll give it a pass. There's a giant Lego brick to the right there. Should be looking at that while I'm going through uh, spectators. Brake hard, turn, accelerate, brake hard. No, cooked it. That would also make light the car off in real life as well. So. And likely kill you. 
<laughs> yeah, in this area? Yeah, probably would have. Look in the distance with that town coming up. God, it's so pretty. We're losing a lot of time here. Right hand turn, sharp, mighty. Soft acceleration, not hard. Corners a bit, going to gradual drift. I said going to a gradual drift. The uh, Scandinavian flick didn't quite work there. Yeah, I think I have to work out the weight transfer on this vehicle. Handles completely differently going up hills compared to going down them, so. Let's go all out. And this is the end. Oh. So it wasn't my best lap, but I don't think I did too badly either. Oh, okay, so I've got a lot of time. But does this add time to my... Let's do that. I'm not sure if that adds a time penalty or if that... Or what, so... interesting that something started to turn in very very rapidly so I'm guessing the uh, it's a knife's edge with this vehicle uh, in terms of speed to turning Oops. so I'm definitely going all out a lot more in this car which is perhaps not the best idea so now we're Olympic level uh, athlete sir Almost had the bins down there. So yeah, definitely have to get the uh, throttle modulation down a bit more. Oh, okay, so it's a plus five second penalty. Interesting. So maybe if I do actually just work on staying on the track, I will actually be a bit more competitive. Maybe that 30 seconds, I can get more than 30 seconds. Because I, I was thinking just through improving my driving style without take, and not even considering the pe time penalty for recovering the car. But uh, if you add both together, then maybe I actually, I wouldn't say you have a shot at first place, but that's, that's wrong. Um, I'd be a lot closer to first place. I think I'd still be about 10, 20 seconds off the pace. For the previous tracks I've done. This, these tracks are a bit shorter, so it's a bit harder to tell. Okay, coming through town. 
Whoops. I really need to pay attention. Oh, I need to... Is it F5? F2. I don't have the uh, recover car button even down, so... Oh, this is neat. Ah, yes, the petrol company called Petrol. Yeah, they know to get out of my way. Actually, that the uh, that's interesting crowd. Um, how the crowd maneuvered there. I didn't even realize it was brought a giant ocean. Oh wow! I'm actually getting pretty badly distracted by um, just all the uh, uh, little details littered by the side of the road, which is probably not the best thing. Like the damaged villas and the yacht on the water. Also pay attention to which gear I'm in. I'm thinking that's part of the uh, performance issues I'm seeing is the, uh, the gear shifting, which I guess makes a really really good case for it to be manual. Although I saw um, there's a specific clutch button, and I don't know if I want to commit to that. There are wings on the side of the NB4 controller, um, but they're very very tiny. I think if they're a bit larger, it make things a bit easier. And for those wondering, um, there's no converter or anything hooked up to this transmitter. It's literally just plugged in via the, the USB charging port and it just works. Shows up as a joystick, you just map your channels as you would normally and it behaves exactly how you'd expect it to. Zero setup at least under Linux. Um, Windows is probably the same. Um, third place once again. Oh, almost came in fourth, wow. Everyone was running a Dust 220. Podium finish. Oh, that's nice. Oh, I thought there was a livery. It's just... Ooh, flat six. Oh, cool. Porsches. Don't know what that star means. That's interesting. Does that mean I get a? I've got the bonus. Maybe it does. Go with the blue. Oh, four rounds. Wow, okay. Well, it does seem like if it's more rounds, each round is shorter. Yeah, 5.1Ks. So I'm wondering if this is set up around like 10 minutes and then subdividing that by the amount of rounds. Or 10 to 15 minutes. So let's back off a bit. Not the smartest thing to do, but 
yeah, look at how it seems after you go through the crowd that they space themselves very, very evenly compared to how they are originally. Okay, this car handles more how, how I would expect it to. And that's why you break. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's hard to turn into a, in a different direction in midair. You really need to have at least one wheel on the ground for that. Okay, yeah, nice and responsive to braking, which is good. And for uh, people commenting that I'm going into the crowd an awful lot, that is true, but also remember that this was the era where People got really close to the cars, and in fact, when we get to the Group B, which is later, that's when a lot of people were dying because of that. So, it is actually somewhat reflective of reality uh, when it comes to the rally series. Uh, in fact, there's some really good YouTubers um, who have been doing some histories of rally, uh, which I've been watching as of late, and everyone seems to cover Group B at some point. But one or two have been covering up the periods leading up to Group B and prior to that, and that's been actually somewhat interesting. Um, like as I said, I don't necessarily call myself a car guy. Um, I'm definitely interested in the history of it more so than the cars themselves, but if you say Lancia, however, I do like a lot of their stuff. So I, I built a drift car recently, and I really badly wanted to put the Lancia Stratos body on it, but uh, unfortunately there was a sizing issue. Um, although I've got parts on order, and I might actually be able to fix that, so spoilers. Um, the GLD is actually getting some upgrades. Um, I know BMR3 commented on uh, some stuff on the GLD, and he was totally accurate about that. Um, Given the pedigree of GL Racing, uh, they kind of dropped the ball, I want to say, in some some ways. Um, but there were some parts I, sh I felt should have been part of the design. Uh, I an adjustable body, uh, or an adjustable chassis, and adjustable camber. No, caster, sorry. It does already have adjustable camber. And um, uh, to be honest, uh, there were some comments about the, uh, the painted brake pads. It doesn't really bother me too much. It was annoying, but it, I got over it extremely quickly. It's, I mean, it's not why I bought that car, and the rims I've got on it, you can't see it anyway. So, so 3.4 minutes. So that is actually indicating to me that they're aiming for a season time of 10 to 15 minutes. And this is me analyzing game development because I'm doing a lot more of it as of late. Um, I'm working on a product for Mini Z stuff that does add game-like elements to it. Uh, and I have been work trying to work on a game for years. Um, and so game development in itself interests me. Let's begin the stage. So this definitely seems to be a later model car. I'll have to go check the dates of it. Um, but if that's true, then I'm definitely feeling a progression in terms of handling. Oh yeah, this just drifts so much better. Um, that is very, very apparent. So the speed, the speed is not going up, but the handling has definitely gone a lot better. Um, and because of that, I'm able to take the turns faster. So what I'm saying is the max speed is probably about the same, but the uh, combination of handling and speed allows me to take the corners better. So the handling allows me to take the corners faster, is what I'm putting it. Um, and I'd be interested to see what like the Dakar truck feels like. In fact, I, I'm very, very tempted to go off and hack the uh, the game files to see if I can just enable that. Plus five seconds, okay. So I don't think it's necessarily my skill is just increasing, like this car feels a lot easier to drive um, than the other ones. And I can always go back and verify that later, so... 
tell yourself, oh, that's horrible, you have to drift that corner. Or go to basically zero. So I'm just working on throttle control to get around the corners. And luckily this has a lot of granularity in terms of throttle control. Um, I'd hate to be playing this with a keyboard. You need a steering wheel or at least a game pad for this. Maybe I should have actually plugged in the pedals now that I think about it, because I'm actually pushing them down as I'm doing all of this. I wonder if there's replays. It'd be very, very interesting to see how other people drive through here. Although I guess if the levels are being automatically generated, that makes it a bit more difficult. And I guess it also means you can't just cheese it by knowing the track. Not knowing the track is definitely making this a bit more difficult. pedestrians are only moving at a portion of your speed so if I'm not going slower they get out of my way slow which is not necessarily the best move full power you can see Admiral Salty playing Euro Truck Simulator that's been flicking on and off all day so I can only assume he's getting his settings right I suppose I should go hide, hide that, but this is probably a good time to uh, spruik his channel. Uh, very, very interesting person, that guy. Um, just recently been going through hell and uh, doing a damn good job of it. Okay. Yeah, so if you like Mario Kart and those styles of games, uh, definitely one to watch. Very, very Australian like myself, but uh, many people don't normally pick my accent, uh, normally they assume I am British. Um, and that is actually, funny enough, my accent changes depending on who I talk to, and it normally, uh, normally matches um, whoever I'm speaking to, and I, I don't know why that is, but uh, I've had some comments about it in the past. Oh, there we go, that was nice. Yeah, I do like having the people on the track, that was definitely a nice touch. Um, hats off to the developer there. It's making this very, very entertaining and making the game world feel a lot more alive. Um, especially the increase in uh, animals on the side of the road. That, um, I actually find that to be a rather neat touch. Get our stuff in. I'm actually surprised I have to click escape to do get out of the repairs menu rather than hit enter. Um, although I think, that, I think that's consistent with the rest of the UI. It feels like it's not, but maybe I'm misimagining things. So I've got a bit more grip on this track and immediately go into the pedestrians, but like, it's noticeable. Uh, the car is handling a bit better on here, so. So we know the weather plays a big difference, we know going off the track plays a big difference, and we know the track surface makes a pretty massive difference. So, and the cars are handled completely differently, so um, it really does feel like they are modelling weight, or that the physics engine behind this is actually pretty decent. Um, it feels better than The Art of Drift, but I haven't put enough time in that game to really be able to comment with any authority. So break. You don't want to fly through the air there. And we've got another... Yeah, I've got airborne there, which is not a good thing. But... So I'm being a bit cautious around wood because um, that has been problematic in the past. It's very, very easy to get stuck. Basically, logs are messy and a good way to uh, uh, 
end up in a small ball of metal. Kind of got used to the camera as well, which is nice, but uh, I really do feel that some Andy Allison would be great here. A bit too much shimmering. But my hat's off to the developer, this is a hell of a game. Uh, I did a lot worse in the, uh, the demo version, and I'm feeling like this is actually masterable. So I don't know if they updated the handling, physics and control, but, uh, or I've just gotten better. Um, likely a combination of the two, but uh, they definitely made this a lot nicer. I'm going to go inside the flags. God, those people getting in the way is actually really distracting. So this card definitely seems to have quite a bit of torque. I'm noticing that um, when going uphill mainly. So on the flats and downhill, um, going with the difference between 80 and 90% is not... Or, 90% and 100% is not that much. Going uphill, it's a massive difference. It's almost twice as fast. So I think this car has made the trade-off for more torque compared to top speed. But too much speed. Let's do a full U-turn. Oh, okay. Maybe not. Let's turn in. I'm not going to say I've got the, ha the hang of this, but uh, at least I'm staying on the road now and being able to pull off some of the drifts. <sighs> Tell you what, using the uh, my RC car transmitter just gives me so much more control than like the pedals or the steering wheel or anything like that. Really reminds me of just how high quality this transmitter is. Kind of just, I kind of wish it did have the vibrate feature because this game does appear to have support for that. I do wonder if it's got force feedback. That would be uh, a reason to investigate using my steering wheel with it. Um, but traditionally, I've had issues with Windows, predominantly Windows games, and the steering wheel on my operating system. Um, like 95% will work, and then that, that last 5% will be a game stopper, such as the accelerator being in reverse or something, and it's one of those things where even if you go off and fix it, uh, the, um, uh, the game just doesn't pick it up for whatever reason. Uh, like I was playing Car X, which is a drifting game, and somehow managed to bind left turn and accelerate together. So you hit the accelerator and you turn left and you can't fix it. Although now that I think about it, I might know what that is. And that's a nasty problem if it is. What I think it is. Doesn't seem like it, but I'm actually finding this game pretty peaceful and relaxing. I wouldn't necessarily call it a chill game, but I definitely would call it a good way to relax. Okay, that was horrible. I should have been able to do better. Yeah, the pressures of streaming are definitely not helping my performance at all, but uh, that doesn't matter. I also need to go, oh actually I was going to say, I need to go check the names of the cars because I don't think they're licensed and now that I think about it, they're definitely not licensed. Oh. I guess one review I could give of this game is if you like hitting pedestrians, this might be the game for you. Um, but this is actually a pretty serious driving sim. It looks cartoonish, but uh, there is some serious 
simulation work going behind, on behind the grid here. I suspect when I go to the more recent cars um, and I can do some counter stereo drifting, that's when I'll be able to tell just how good the engine is. In fact, you know what I should probably be doing is actually looking at footage of older vehicles and how they handle rally and whether or not they actually did counter steer drifting through corners or if they just did throttle control because the throttle control is working particularly well and the drifting, while it does pop up every now and again, is not necessarily the best way to drive this vehicle compared to just letting off the throttle and applying a bit of brake. Oh, so I need to pay attention to where I'm going. Like, part of it is definitely that these cars just don't have enough power to be able to get the back end out reliably. And so the few opportunities where you're going fast enough to do that, it's, you just don't have enough practice to be able to pull it off reliably. Like that. I, I was probably being a bit too ambitious to try and get the back out there. Whoa, that was... Oh, we're near, near the end anyway, so what we're at, we're at two minutes on this track. So that'd be a great drifting corner because you have to just slow down quite a bit just to get around it. But... Oh, someone's messaging me. That's the best way to check the scene out. One sec, someone's requesting a stream link. Uh, continue, so let's go for another season. I actually came a second that time. Okay, and by quite a bit. But three minute gap between myself and first place. I don't know how you'd make up three. Oh, actually, no, that's total. That's accumulated time. That's interesting. That's very, very interesting. Okay. So maybe I'm actually closer to first than I thought. I think I am, actually. So that was in 1970s, Don. I think we're on to 1971 next. Oh, that looks... the Rotary 3. To do it. Yeah, 200 horsepower, so we've nearly doubled the amount of horsepower I've got now. And we've got a 5 speed, so this is going to be interesting, I think. An interesting livery there, which is very reminiscent of the art series of BMW cars, um, which I do remember seeing when I was not in person but reading up about when I was very, very young. Um, and I was kind of blown away by the designs uh, of some of those vehicles. So we'll actually just quickly take a closer look at that. What was it, that one? There we go. Okay, so that star does look like it is a bonus livery. Ah, oh, that's interesting. So I can't select that new vehicle. Okay, that makes sense. Let's go to blue again. Touch coma blue. So what? One thing I'm finding interesting is okay. This is only two rounds. I'm seeing uh, a lot more rounds in a stage. Maybe it's is it four? Or is it two? Okay. So tarmac, this will be interesting. I think I'll have more grip here. Okay, so the center, the car is centering a lot better. Now that's very, very interesting. Definitely a lot more grip here compared to the dirt stages. But the fact that it's centering and easy to keep the car dead straight um, is not an aspect I thought I'd have to consider. Wow, this looks beautiful. Get back on track. There we go. 
um, all over the place. I just need to sit down and concentrate, I think. So, uh, I can stop the commentary for a bit and just focus on racing. In my ultra low powered vehicle. I'm gonna have to break hard on the ash foul. That's a real big difference. Maybe I should really be hand breaking actually. Nope. And back in. Okay, cool. God, if I could drift up and down this, that would be spectacular. Okay, so that's a season ender, <laughs> and likely someone's life. Yeah, with a bit more power, this would be spectacular. Really not doing too well on this map. I kind of like sliding, so this is more like grip racing, so I need to focus more on braking, I think. That's what I'm making this day. And also not jumping into the air. I was doing really, really good up until this season. Let's get some straight line speed, break. Take too early. Actually, you know what this reminds me of? In fact, this entire track is um, that. Uh, I've forgotten the name of it. There's a, a run in low altitude in the US um, that's got a lot of. Travels a lot of vertical distance. Can't for the life of me. Sorry. Don't get distracted. I can't for the life of me remember the name. Uh, yeah, the the camera was giving me quite a bit of motion sickness, but I've kind of got used to it. Um, I don't think I'm getting consistent frame rates because I might have jacked the settings up slightly too high. Uh, and Linux, but um, uh, there are some pretty. Be in fact, let's. I'll take that hit. Let's bring up the uh, options. Graphics. Oh, that resolution's higher than I thought it was. And it did have Andy Aliasing. Interesting. I'll have to play around that with that later. Okay, so that's a pretty big difference going to high. Um... Audio controls. Yeah, I'm actually streaming it um, because I'm using an ultra wide camera. That's the one. Camera view. So you could probably move it in, but for me, the issue is. Oh, this camera shake. In rotation. I think I probably want more rotation just to slow it down. Yeah, so th that rendering issue there, uh, that's definitely going to be a Linux specific thing. And I can already feel the frame rates feel a lot more consistent, which is kind of crazy because this is running on a 2080 Ti. And if it can't do the higher settings, then that gives you an indication of just how high, uh, how much graphics power you need. Yeah, uh, actually. Those changes have really made the camera a bit more bearable for me. Um, how are they feeling for you? It was more that um, it seemed like it was rubber banding the camera. And I didn't like that because it was snapping very quickly and then becoming fine. And that I found jarring. So 
So I probably shouldn't be reading Chad and Racing, but that's fine. I'm not expecting to win this season. Oh, that's the end anyway. Cool. I think I actually prefer it in high settings rather than the highest. Yeah, that, that's why I put it up to 40% to try and slow down the changing of the direction. I, I think he's definitely onto something with the camera, but it just feels like it needs a tiny bit more refinement, uh, especially when you're transitioning from left to right. I'm just going to see what other options we had there with the camera again. Uh, camera, I've got the FMV jacked all the way up. Yeah, I'd actually hate to see it with no rotation because some of the uh, transitions you do are rather quick. So um, I think you probably need to limit the initial acceleration and the maximum velocity. Um, and just accept the fact that you may end up looking at the car sideways and sharp enough turns. But that's not necessarily a bad thing if you're going for that more dramatic style. Actually, this is fairly nice. I was actually saying it, the ultra wide is really nice for being distracted to, to allow you to be distracted by what's going on side by side, but um, I didn't know how effective it would be if you're able to see further into the distance. And I actually don't mind being able to see further into the distance, but I guess the cost of that is, as you mentioned the uh, in other chats, uh, I kind of want race notes, and I keep on feeling that. The, uh, the more I play this game. It's a want more than a need, but it feels like it would definitely add something. Yeah, now, now that it's in highest and it's just rock solid with the frames, um, I'm pretty happy with this. I'm actually wondering if those auto settings on highest were actually uh, enabling and disabling features because I was getting really bad shimmering of like the um, the leaves on stream um, and that seems to be totally gone now so I'm wondering if my if any aliasing is kicked in now that I've lowered my performance expectations. And that sounds like my battery charger just reset. God, some of these turns are so sharp. I, th I think I'm also not taking the turns aggressively enough, which is hard. And some of these corners are so hard that you do need to take them aggressive. Yeah, actually, I'll see if I can flick it into night mode um, after the season, if you want. Well, I'm, actually, I'm tempted to just exit out now. Um, let's retire from the season. So the free roam is new, um, time attack is as well, I didn't realise it was online events. That's actually kind of awesome, because I, I was actually wondering earlier if you could actually see, um, uh, do playbacks. So if they have the playbacks with the uh, the custom, uh, with the online, that'd be really, really good. Uh, do, 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 one stage. Oh, and they've got some fixed maps, well, that's good. So fog is really, really awesome. Um, so is nice. Let's try night in that case. And... Oh, I do actually have some more cars. I don't know if I want to do the Group S. Right. No. Let's try that. So I've been very, very impressed with the, the lighting in night mode. Um, and that's how I tended to race a lot in the demo version. Uh, it allowed you to see the crests of the level a lot better, and the dips. Oh, the, the music is, is spectacular. Um, I'm definitely going to be buying the, uh, the audio track after this, so... Um, also, have a look at the reflectors and the bloom uh, of the light of the signs. Oh, 
car yet. This car is handling a bit better and has the power to get the back out, which is nice. So in one of the other uh, levels I played, it actually had little reflectors down the side of the road, and as you approached them and caught them in the light, they'd actually light up, which is really, really, really nice. Okay, I can actually afford to put a bit more power down with this car, which is nice because of the handling. I actually sh should keep an eye out. So it looks like the rear lights are not casting a light, um, but I'm very interested to see. Uh, so they're, they're not lighting up the environment, but I'm very, very interested to see if the back, um, the flames out the back do. No, it doesn't look like they do. That's a bit, of, a bit of a shame. Okay, this car handles completely differently. The, uh, some campfires would be really, really good as well. That's rather traditional with Valley. I'm kind of surprised it's only people. Uh, you do see the occasional tent. Um, but some extra off track lighting would be nice. Oh, that looks spectacular. And there's the logs. Logs are so dangerous in Rally. So, so dangerous. I'm not just talking about in-game, like, it's a good way to uh, finish up your uh, run in real life. Oh, actually, I don't know if you caught that, but um, the front brakes were lit up red uh, and then started to fade. So that, I've seen that in a couple of the, uh, the pictures I've made available, but that's actually impressive to see. That's a, a, a completely different level of um, De uh, attention to detail uh, that's really that's actually one of the things that's really impressing me with this game is the physics engine seems very very capable more so than the uh, the graphics would imply um, like it definitely seems to be modeling grip on oh actually the rear lights did light up the, uh, uh, the track there um, it definitely seems to be modeling all four wheels and weight transfer of the vehicle uh, so that when you do brake and the weight shift forward you don't necessarily get the additional um, uh, sharpness in the turns until all that weight is fully shifted. So it sort of comes on gradually, and that means if you're making a turn and braking, you have to compensate for the fact that your turning gets sharper and sharper and sharper. Um, so there's actually two other things I wouldn't mind trying. Um, one of them is uh, fog, and the other one is rain. So third, once again. I wonder if this is actually generating true times or sort of trying to rub a band off my time. So let's do a custom rally again in Finland. And we'll start with rain. I'll leave fog till the end. Um, and I do want to try the Lancia in this case. Group S. Oh wow, two wings. Is it Group B? So I'm a big girl. Oh, oh no, I don't have. I have not unlocked that yet. Or can I? I'm going to try something a bit modern, actually. Uh, let's go with the Suzuki. If there's anything else you want me to, uh, to try in box, uh, let me know and I'll um, flick it over. On stage. I could definitely see myself coding to this music, um, and that's always a good sign. Actually, well, another game that had some very, very good music, which I was not expecting, was a game called Hackernet. Oh, okay. Yeah, wow, this car handles completely different to anything else I've driven. And wow, was that a turbo lag? When I let off the brakes there, there was like a surge of power that came on. That, I was not expecting that.
Whoa, yeah. Wow, th this is definitely modeling a turbo engine. Um, I was not expecting that at all. So it lets off the power in like staggered bursts and it, the power comes on not immediately. Um, bend stages. Wow, this just takes off if you let it. Maybe shouldn't have chosen rain for this one. I really just want a straight because I want to see how fast this thing can go. So this is like eight times more powerful than any of the other vehicles I've driven up till now. Yep, that's not how you turn. <laughs> yeah, perhaps chose a bit too tight of a course for this amount of power. I'd actually probably want something more modern with the uh, shorter wheelbase, like the uh, the coupes, um, rather than this turbo monstrosity that's four wheel drive. But it does drift incredibly well. This has got the power to just maintain a drift, which is incredible. Unlike the other cars, which can barely drift. Actually, I might just back out in that case. Um, because I want to try... Uh, let's try a coupe on a longer track with fog. Yeah, that'll do. And let's go to the group A. Oh, maybe I don't have... Group S, group B, famous. Group 4, that's not what I'm looking for. Group 3, group 2. I'm just screwing around now if I'm not careful, so let's try that. I do like the BMWs. So the game seems to load pretty quick. There are some mind loading screens, but um, I've never really been it doesn't seem to really indicate or communicate well when it's ready to progress. Um, but what I find weird is a game like this. Um, I always find it weird with games like this in that I don't know why people don't try and hide loading. Like, if people have selected nearly all the options or all the options, why don't you just preemptively try and load the level and then just discard that if it turns out they go off and change something? And that would buy you an extra second or two to do the load. And in a game like this where the loading is only a couple of seconds, that seems like it would be a big win overall. Um, everything would appear to be somewhat instant. Especially since the you don't change all the options in one place with this, but you seem to change one thing at a time. So there's about three or four screens you have to click through. Like that seems like a good opportunity to load most of the assets preemptively and do any calculations you need to in advance. And perhaps even calculate some scenarios you might even throw away because someone changes the option. So um, caching's been a lot in my head in the last couple of days, so hence why I'm thinking about things like this. So I actually do remember the fog being a lot thicker and normally having the lights engaged. But, um, I think in this mode, this is where uh, pace notes would be great. And actually, now that I think about it, those are those indicators on the side of the road. If we had the lights on right now, and in fact, can I can I turn the lights on? I think I can. Uh, controls, horn, repair puncture. No, so the lights are automatic. That's a, actually a bit of a shame. That's a fairly nice... 
Yeah, so maybe this is the amount of power level I want in this level. So I think this was about 300 horsepower. Bit taily, so I'd say 250 might be a good match for this. Okay. And then take my hands. Yeah, this car just handles completely different, so it's a lot more performant, um, but it's on a nice edge, so it turns a lot with... Well, and there's those cooling brakes. It turns a lot with just a bit of input, regardless of if you're on the throttle or not. So the, uh, the first cars I was doing, if you came off the throttle, uh, the handling of the car is completely different to being on throttle or idle, and gearing, which gear you're in played a huge difference. Maybe that's what I'm missing. Maybe I'm, because this is an automatic, I'm not kind of getting a full experience in the amount of control I have. Actually, let's back into the water. Okay, so it's fake water. <laughs> yeah, I need more speed for that sort of turning. And then I'll lose grip. So I'd actually want probably slightly less power and a bit more grip, but a tiny bit more torque. Yeah, I'm all over the place. I'm actually just blown away at just how different every single vehicle handles in this game. Like even in the same, um, with the same horsepower and uh, same class and everything, um, each car is really, really unique. Um, so I can really see that to master this game and to win, you really want to be trying all the vehicles. And I do like that they added that invisible um, circle around the, uh, the car for uh, when your view is obstructed. Oh, actually there is a campfire on the side of the road there. Nice. Oh, that was like wrestling a gorilla. Well, with that, I'm actually going to end up here. Um, starting to get to the time where I normally cook food um, and this is going to be a long video anyway <laughs> not my longest video but long um, so expect this to be on YouTube very, very shortly um, and as I said if you're watching this on YouTube there will be a link below to this game on Steam um, it's also available on Epic Games and GOG if you're into that sort of thing um, I definitely recommend GOG if you've got no real preference and I hope to see everyone soon uh, talk to you later